inserting shapes and other objects into a publication. Images aren't the only things you can insert into your publication. You can also insert shapes, advertisements, calendars and more. As with most other tasks in Publisher, inserting these things is as easy as clicking the mouse. Publisher gives you the ability to draw shapes in the same way that you can draw shapes in other Office programs. The only difference is that the shapes that you draw in Publisher become objects in your publication. To draw shapes in Publisher, click on the Insert tab. Then click on Shapes in the Illustration group. You'll see this drop-down menu appear. Select a shape that you want to draw from the menu. Then, click on the place on your page where you want to draw it, and then drag to create the shape. Just as with images, a bounding box appears around the shape. You can use the bounding box to move, resize or rotate the shape. Use the circle above the shape to rotate it. Use the square handles to expand it vertically up or down, or horizontally left or right. If you want to move the object, move your cursor inside the box. You'll then see the four-way arrow underneath your mouse pointer. Click and hold your left mouse button and then drag it to its new location. If you right-click on the object, you'll see this menu that you can use to edit the object. Let's cover the top row of icons from left to right. The first is to wrap text around the image or graphic. We'll learn about this later in the course. The next one is to bring an object, such as our shape, perhaps on top of another object. This last icon is to send an object back, as in behind another object. Now let's cover the second row. Shape Fill, which is the icon with the paint bucket, allows you to change the fill colour of the graphic. Our image here is blue. We can change it to yellow using this icon. The next icon is to change the outline of the shape. Our shape has a solid black line. Using this icon, we can change it to red and dashed lines if we wanted to. The last icon is Format Painter. This allows you to copy and paste formatting, such as alignment, indentations and so on. Select the text or the shape that you want to copy, and then click on the icon to copy character formatting. If you want to copy alignment, indentations and so on, you'll have to go to the paragraph in the Home tab, and click this icon here, so the paragraph marks show up after a paragraph. Copy and paste that as well as your text. You can also go to the Drawing Tools Format tab in the ribbon, which is shown here. From this tab on the ribbon, you can edit or change the shape, apply a style or effect, stack shapes then arrange them, rotate or even resize. These are all tools you learned to use earlier in this course when we discussed working with objects and images, except now you can apply them to shapes as well. Sometimes, especially if you're creating a flyer for an event, it can be helpful to insert a calendar into your publication. To do this, click on the Insert tab, and then click on Calendars. You'll see different types of calendars displayed in the drop-down menu. You can select a calendar from either this month section or the next month section. You can also click on more calendars. Click on the calendar to select it. Choose a month that you want displayed, and then press insert. The calendar is then inserted into your publication. You can then move it around the publication the same way you would any other object. You can also resize it and rotate it. Just remember to select the calendar first so the bounding box appears. In addition, you can right click on the calendar and select change text from the drop down menu here. You can use this to change the font used in the calendar. You can also use the selections in the drop down menu to add or delete rows or columns in the calendar. If you're using Publisher to create a company newsletter, you may need to insert advertisements from sponsors into the newsletter. To do this, click Advertisements under the Insert tab. As you can see, there are three categories of advertisements. Advertisements are used to advertise a company, product or service. Attention getters 
are graphics used to draw attention to a certain aspect, such as a sale, a free offer, or even a free trial. Coupons are to offer savings on products or services. Click on the graphic that you want to use. You can also click on More Advertisements to see a broader selection. When you click on More Advertisements, you'll see the Building Blocks Library, as you can see here. Select the graphic that you want to use from the left. Then choose if you want to include the logo on the right hand side of the window here. Then click Insert when you're finished. You can then resize, reposition or rotate the advertisement. You can also click on the text to edit it, as we learnt to do earlier in this course. Don't forget that you can also replace any graphics in the ad by going to the Graphics Manager and selecting a graphic or image to insert. You can also insert different parts of a page, such as headers, accessory bars and response forms. To do this, go to the Insert ribbon and click on Page Parts. Then select More Page Parts at the bottom. You'll then see this window. Although you can select a page part from the drop down menu on the ribbon, the Building Blocks library shows you all the page parts from which to choose. It gives you a better idea of all the things you can insert into a publication. You can insert headings, such as the title of the newsletter, pull quotes, which are quotes that you pull from an article in your newsletter. The quote you use should be interesting because the pull quote will draw attention and engage your readers so that they read the article. Reply forms, so your readers can interact with you by placing orders, signing up or sending in responses. Sidebars, which are typically placed beside an article and offers more, albeit brief, information. Stories, stories are also used for brief text. You may want to tell more about your company, its products or its services. And table of contents are always helpful if you have a larger publication that contains multiple pages and a lot of content. Choose the page part that you want to insert, and then click on the Insert button. Once it's inserted into your publication, you can move, resize and rotate it as you would with any other object. You can also click inside to edit the text and use the graphics manager to add your own images and graphics. We inserted a narrow response form into our publication. Unlike with other Office programs, the table of contents will not automatically include headings and page numbers. You will have to manually enter content into the table of contents. Borders and accents can be very helpful when you're designing your publication. You can use them to call attention to certain text, to separate content, to frame content, and generally make your publication easier on the eyes. To see the type of borders and accents that Publisher offers, go to the Insert tab, then click on the drop-down menu below Borders and Accents. You can choose from the borders and accents shown here, or click on More Borders and Accents. Publisher offers bars, which you can use to separate your content. Boxes, which you can stick anywhere to add decoration to your publication, or use them to break up content. Emphasis, to draw attention to certain content. Frames, which means you can frame an entire page, or resize the frame so it only frames a portion of your publication's content. Lines, which can be used just the same as bars. And patterns, which can be used just like boxes. Choose the border or accent that you want to use by clicking on it, then clicking on Insert. We'll choose a frame, then click Insert. We can right click on any part of the frame to format it. So right click on it and select Format Object. As you can see, we've clicked on the frame. We can now change its colour or its size. We can also click on the Shape Effects button to add effects to the shape, just the same as we added effects to our images. We can also double click on any part of the frame to see the Drawing Tools Format tab in the ribbon.